Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Final Fantasy X. We're picking up just where we left off with our romantic lake scene with Titus and Yuna. Kind of basically deciding, yes we love each other, yes we could stop the pilgrimage, run away together. But Yuna just can't stop now at this point, she's at the point of no return. Wait, I'll go with you. But like we are confirming, we're going to be a couple and we're going to just journey to the end. We're going to journey to Zanark End. And like that's the goal. That's where we're at. That's what we're doing. So it's like super, super sweet. But um, yeah, we've officially like defeated Maester Seymour twice. We've discovered that, like, Yevon's run by zombies. It's not a very good vibe. Um, everyone hates us. And even still, we're going to soldier on. Sir Oren? Waka? Lulu? Kamari? Riku? Everyone? We leave at dawn. And... I'm sorry for putting you through all this. And I'm... Enough. You need your rest. Yes. Good night. But yeah, we're, we're currently after the... We're, we're coming into the late game now of the game, to be honest. We're going to be unlocking, like, the next kind of couple of areas. But the next area specifically, the Calmlands. Huge, huge area for unlocking, um, like, bonus, like, endgame content and stuff. But we're going to run back here to get that chest really quickly. My eagle-eyed vision. Saw that in the corner. Another lucid ring. But yeah, we're going to have like monster capturing and like just in case I'm after looking back through my footage, I don't think I've shown you where one of the jet spheres was. But essentially if you run down here, I think I like collect because I, I obviously collected it but I didn't like, I can't find it within the footage. But it's basically here. It's along this little side road there. There's a jet sphere. You can collect it. Uh, like at this point and then journey on but just don't don't miss that one um, But yeah, you just progress up here and we're like nearing the kind of edge of you know The the world here now, so we're just moving to the calm lands and then from the calm land calm lands and um, straight through to Mount Gagazet. So we're just gonna make a quick save and as you can see there 27 hours was like before we when we first arrived to Pavel 30 hours is when we we uh, decided to move on from our saves so with three hours of grinding we're pretty powerful we're not gonna come up to a lot of issues um but this being like a unity run where we're trying to like level up everybody all together there's never really a battle that's difficult I mean it's like rock paper scissors Waka fights flyers Orin and Kamari fight armored people. Lulu fights the calmlands. Elements. Long ago, the high summoners fought sin here. The road ends here. Beyond, there are no towns, no villages, only endless plains. Many summoners stray from their path and lose their way here. Because there's so many side quests. <laughs> they just got enraptured with chocobo racing and monster capturing, which we're going to see later on in this episode. But yeah, they lose their way with side quests. I've always known where to go. I won't let you die. I'll find
find a way somehow. And like that's their commitment. They're gonna journey this road, but they're they're gonna find a different ending, hopefully. So, you know, the best of luck to them. Let's go. But one of the first things we have to do is I told Yuna I would find a way. I guess I wanted to believe that words could make it come true. And just a really interesting little side note about this, that obviously, like, Titus has been narrating an awful lot of this experience, but there will come a point in the story where his narration will end. And if you think back to, like, all the way back in episode one, he had said, like, listen to my story, this may, this may be our last chance. And once we hit that particular scene, um, his narration will stop. Because... You know, that's the story so far. So we're technically in one prolonged, hour-filled um, flashback. And, you know, poor Kamari's going to have to be there. Like, remember when you, like, fought off Seymour Kamari and then we, like, spent three hours just running up and down a bridge? Remember that? Remember that fun time? But, yeah, enemies here. Nothing that we haven't done before. Armored enemy, quick enemy, and elemental enemy. Use appropriate character with skills that are appropriate to defeat. But it's Machen. Love this man. Perhaps you would like to know a bit about these planes. Always. Mm -hmm. As you know, these planes were once a battlefield. A great battle between Bavel and Zanakan, the melee of Machina. That war left this place a barren, lifeless land. Then time passed. The summoners took note of this uninhabited land. Great battles could be fought here with no harm to the common folk. Perfect for a final battle with sin, as it were. Summoners wait here, ready to perform the final summoning. Ah, to know what they must feel. In any case, when Sin is defeated here, the calm will visit Spira once more. That's why this place is now known as the Calm Lands. Exactly who dubbed it so is unknown. And that, as they say, is that. But yeah, this is basically where once summoners get the final summoning, they uh, come here to fight it. And yeah, poor Kamari is so far behind the poor Ronzo man. He literally got like no levels. He's like towards the end of Riku's grid. It's very sad. Roxas is still moving along Yuna's grid, like going back to like the start to get like no shock, no blaze, all that sort of stuff. The basic white magics. But yeah, going forward, um. You know, very, very soon, um, like wild encounters, leveling even, like a lot of this stuff is going to become very meaningless with um, the monster capturing. And so I'm after turning off encounters here purely because that's, you know, we've seen the two encounters a lot of the time. Um, I just was trying to catch up with that guy to see if he was like the Chocobo trainer. He wasn't. But... Look at all them chocobos. Look this big mean machine. Scares them away. But if you run, and like obviously with no encounters, it's a lot easier. But just make a beeline to that chocobo in the top uh, left side of the map there. And this character will let us train chocobos, which will let us eventually ride chocobos around the calm lands. Which we need for a lot of good bonus content. So 
yeah. Now we start the chocobo training mini game, which is a total pain. But all you have to do is try and ride in a straight line. And you have to like adjust the chocobo as it runs. Because it will just literally zig and zag. And you have to try and like finagle your way to make it go as straight as possible. Um, and obviously keep it to within the balloons as well. Oh, it's like it's so messy. And you have to get it there within like 12 seconds. Eight. And yeah, like just... Point two of a second off. It's so, so frustrating. But this, this, this then consumed my life for, I want to say about like two hours. And I'm cutting all this out basically, but yeah. And then it's like, don't go outside the boundaries either. Oh, it's so frustrating. But... It is very, very important because throughout the game, we'd been collecting crests of various different planets. So like moon crest, sun crest, um, we don't actually have the sun crest, uh, Jupiter, Venus, all that sort of stuff. So one of the sigils, so there's, there's two halves to each of these. There's the crests and the sigils. And basically this uh, mini game is tied to the sigil for the for the sun uh, collection of items, and once you get the sun sigil and it's and the sun crest, and then collect a character's ultimate weapon, uh, you're able to basically get their their best weapons in the game. They're called celestial weapons, which have like other special properties. They're 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 basically the best weapons in the game. And to get the best weapon in the game for Titus, we have to suffer through uh, these chocobo craziness. But you get nice items too. So like, beating this one, you end up getting, I think it's a turbo ether? No, an elixir. My mistake. Oh lord. And then basically you get different trainings. So that one was just the wobbly one. Try and make him run in a straight line. Then there's now balls. They're going to throw balls at us. But this time the chocobo will just run straight. So it's like more control. So it will just run in a straight line. And then like left and right will uh, change its direction. And basically uh, avoid the balls. Yeah, avoid them is the so the way you're actually the way you're good at this mini game is if you actually don't hit them and you just don't take repeated balls to the face. Ugh, quite a challenge for me. But yeah, just 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 dodge them. Just just avoid the balls. The balls are not good, and they come in groups of three, so you can kind of you know. Uh, adjust for that you know in theory and I think I'm literally like one second yeah what point one second off oh it is so particular so so particular and we're off to a great start again but yeah just just enjoy these mini games they're 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 not the worst and they're not the most mind numbing. And you at least get like nice things along the way. Ugh. There's nothing worse when you get like stun locked and it just keeps firing them at you and you just can't like get by. It's so annoying. But um going forward, um like, I've obviously been cutting battles before. Um, but essentially there's like a massive, massive side quest. Where it becomes like Pokemon. You have to like, uh, kill enemies with a certain weapon and they are captured. And then just try and capture 10 of every single enemy in the entire game. So, I do a large amount of that off camera. 
um, but in general I'll kind of give a general guideline as to these certain enemies spawn in this particular area of the map or what have you but like realistically it's just the case of travel to a different zone put the you know high frequency of encounters on and you should be able to just literally run this when you find a certain one just run in that spot and it'll cycle through a couple of random types of encounters but like you will just get them all um but i give some guidance uh when i'm going capturing where to kind of find certain ones and where like not to forget to go and explore for particular ones and this is just all bedlam there's just there's balls there's birds it's just complete chaos and we, we hate it. But I get through these markedly quicker than the final stage of this minigame gauntlet with chocobos. Which I can safely say took me about probably two hours. But um let's get to that minigame first. But yeah, just just dodge, dodge and weave. And do your best to not get hit. So yeah, someone's finally finished all their exercises. And now she wants to race us. So. The race is now where things get very, very interesting. So the catcher chocobo is where we're going to be getting our sun sigil and basically they just race across the calm lands there are balloons they are good we want the balloons there are birds they are bad as you run you can collect balloons collecting balloons shaves three seconds off your time being hit by a bird adds three seconds also being hit by a bird completely stops your momentum for two seconds so really it's like minusing five seconds off your time every time you hit a bird and to win the challenge first, you just need to beat the time of the trainer. So one, two, three, four, and we're gonna get five. So now we have 15 seconds. Oh, well, I didn't get the fifth one. But we're currently at minus 12 seconds to our time. And essentially, to like gold star the challenge and to get the sigil, we need to collect enough balloons to bring our time under zero seconds. Under zero seconds, that's that's right. You can't get enough to just reach zero. You have to beat zero. And unfortunately with those three birds, I could have got this done on like, oh, anyway. I beat her time, which is 45 seconds. And this is our first instance of getting a level 3 key sphere. So we could have just sat uh, people down at their, um, you know, end of their grid and let somebody break out to go to another one. And you see the balloons are randomized. That's one other problem. The balloons are completely randomized. So there might come a time where we get a really good run. And essentially the best runs are when there's like four to five balloons just on that straight because there's no birds to you know, distract. We also need them on the right hand side of the hill because it's around the left hand side of the hill. The trainer can just get all those balloons. It's very stressful. But just keep dodging, keep weaving. And just getting hit there is just the worst because they spawn back so quickly. But I did cut out all the other ones and we're basically what's next is going to be the winning race. And then uh, we're going to finish up the episode there guys. But I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you for the next one. Talk to you soon.
God. What? I am extremely talented. 